Hi everyone. In this video, let us cover important concepts of antibacterials. In our previous video, we have covered few of the important concepts along with few of the questions and answers. And this is the part two of our video series. And we are going to continue with few of the other concepts in question and answer format. Fifth one. Which of the following is an anti-pseudomonal penicillin? Options are A. Methicillin B. Piperacillin C. Amoxicillin and D. Penicillin V. So here all the drugs listed are the penicillins and we have to identify the penicillin which is an anti-pseudomonal penicillin. So pseudomonas infection is a gram-native infection which is not easily treated by normal penicillins like the penicillin G and penicillin V. So we have to use the penicillins which are highly selective for this pseudomonas aeruginosa infections. So here the right answer is piperacillin. So piperacillin is an anti-pseudomonal penicillin and we have other drugs like carbenicillin and ticarcillin. All these are the anti-pseudomonal penicillins. Similarly, methicillin is one of the drug which is used in the Staphylococcus aureus infections. So methicillin is a anti-staphylococcal penicillin. Even nowadays, resistance is going to be developed towards this methicillin, which results in the MRSA, methicillin resistance Staphylococcus aureus infections. But normally, methicillin can act against the Staphylococcus aureus infections. Similarly, other drugs within this category include cloxacillin, dicloxacillin, nafcicillin. All these are commonly known as anti-Staphylococcal penicillins. Similarly, third option is the amoxicillin. Amoxicillin is one of the drugs which is effective both against gram-positive as well as gram-native infections. So amoxicillin as well as another drug ampicillin, both of these drugs are extended spectrum antibiotics. So these drugs are effective against both gram-positive as well as gram-native infections. Finally, penicillin V as well as penicillin G, these are the natural penicillins which are mainly effective against the gram-positive infections. Sixth one. Bioavailability of imipenem is increased by co-administration of Options are A. Vancomycin B. Cycloserine C. Ciprofloxin D. Silastatin So which type of drug should be added along with the imipenem in order to increase the bioavailability of this drug? What is imipenem? Imipenem is one of a carbapenem. So among these carbapenems, imipenem only requires co-administration of another drug to increase the bioavailability. So what is the drug? So the right answer is silastatin. Silastatin is one of the drugs which is going to inhibit the renal dehydrodipeptidase enzyme. This enzyme acts on the imipenem such that this drug is going to be fragmented into the metabolites. So renal dehydrodipeptidase enzyme is responsible for the breakdown of the imipenem within the kidney which is blocked by silastatin. So silastatin can be combined with this imipenem to increase the bioavailability as well as the duration of action of imipenem. Eighth one, which of the following drug produces diarrhea as main side effect? Options are A. Linezolid B. Vancomycin C. Clindamycin D. Quinopristine. So which type of drug produces diarrhea as main side effect? Many of the drugs produce constipation and diarrhea as few of the gastrointestinal disorders. But here few of the antibiotics can increase the pathological organisms which may produce some diarrhea. So here which type of antibiotic can induce the diarrhea? So the right answer is here clindamycin. All we have seen in the first part the clindamycin is one of the drug which can produce a pseudomembranous colitis because this clindamycin is ineffective towards the clostridium difficile infections. So when this drug is given, clostridium difficile infection is going to be increased which results in the pseudomembranous colitis leading to the diarrhea. So diarrhea is one of the important side effect of clindamycin and this can be controlled by few of the other antibiotics like the vancomycin. Now vancomycin can control the pseudomembranous colitis Otherwise, we can use the other anti diarrheal agents like the metronidazole. So, either vancomycin or metronidazole can be used to control the clindamycin induced diarrhea. Ninth one, which of the following drug acts as non selective MAO inhibitor? Options are A. Clindamycin, B. Vancomycin, C. Linezolid, 
D. Quinopristine. So here one of the antibiotic is having an additional MAO inhibitory activity. So what is that antibiotic? Here the right answer is linezolid. Linezolid is one of the drug which is having the weak MAO inhibitory activity. And because of inhibition of MAO enzyme, it can result in few of the reactions like the cheese reaction. MAO enzymes, particularly MAO B enzyme, is responsible for metabolism of the monoamines like the tyramine. Now the tyramine is going to be metabolized by this MAO enzyme to the metabolites. When this linezolid is going to inhibit this MAO enzyme, it results in the increased tyramine levels which produce the hypertensive crisis and this reaction what we call cheese reaction. Because cheese is rich in the tyramine, so this side effect is called as cheese reaction. So cheese reaction is observed with the MAO inhibitors. But linezolid is having the additional MAO inhibitor activity, which can also produce a cheese reaction. So it should be carefully given with the food containing the tyramine as well as along the other monoamines. Tenth one, phototoxicity is one of the side effects observed with which of the following drug? Options are A. Doxycycline, B. Erythromycin, C. Clindamycin and D. Trimethoprim. So which type of drug produce the phototoxicity? The right answer is doxycycline. Doxycycline is one of a tetracycline and tetracyclines can produce some phototoxicity. So whenever the patients are going to take these tetracyclines, they should not be exposed directly to the sunlight because these drugs can produce some phototoxicity resulting in the skin rashes, itching and similar phototoxic reaction is also observed with the other category of drugs fluoroquinolones. So fluoroquinolones and tetracyclines when they are indicated for longer periods they can develop some phototoxicity so the patient should not be exposed directly to the sunlight. And other options are not producing the phototoxicity erythromycin is one of the drugs which is a macrolide antibiotic which mainly produce uh, vestibular disorders and clindamycin is one of the drugs which produce a diarrhea and trimethoprim is one of an antifolate mainly produce anemia. Eleventh one. Which of the antibiotic is used in the treatment of H. pylori infection? Options are A. Chloramphenicol B. Erythromycin C. Streptomycin D. Clarithromycin So what is H. pylori infection? H. pylori Helicobacter pylori infection can produce some peptic ulcers. So in order to treat these peptic ulcers, we can use few of the antibiotics along with the proton pump inhibitors. So which type of antibiotics are used for the H. pylori infection? The right answer is clarithromycin. Clarithromycin is one of the antibiotic which is included in the triple therapy. Within this triple therapy, we can use few other drugs like proton pump inhibitors, clarithromycin and amoxicillin. So this is the triple therapy. Even we can also have quadruple therapy where other antibiotics can be used. So for treatment of H. pylori infection, one of the antibiotic is clarithromycin and other antibiotics are amoxicillin and metronidazole. So these three are particularly used to treat the H. pylori infection. Even tetracyclines can be used but they are somewhat less effective compared with these three antibiotics. Twelfth one. Which of the following drug can produce muscle paralysis by inhibition of exocytosis? A. Moxifloxin B. Streptomycin C. Minocycline D. Linezolid. So here which drug produces a muscle paralysis by inhibition of the exocytosis? Exocytosis is one of the process where the neurotransmitters are released and within the neuromuscular junction one of the important neurotransmitters is the acetylcholine. So in a simple way which of the following drug is going to reduce the acetylcholine release at the neuromuscular junction? So here right answer is streptomycin. Streptomycin is an aminoglycosid antibiotic which can inhibit the calcium mediated exocytosis thereby it can inhibit the acetylcholine release. When the acetylcholine is not released, the muscle contraction can be prevented so it produces the muscle paralysis. And sometimes at a toxic dose, streptomycin can produce the muscle paralysis leading to the neurotoxicity and such conditions can be treated by few of the drugs like the neostigmine. Neostigmine is a acetylcholine esterase inhibitor which increases the acetylcholine levels resulting in the increased nicotinic action. So neostigmine can increase the muscle contraction thereby it can relieve the muscle paralysis produced by streptomycin. Aminoglycosid antibiotics mainly produce the two important side effects like the vototoxidy and nephrotoxicity. and apart from these two side effects, muscle paralysis is also observed 
because of the inhibition of acetylcholine release from the presynaptic nerve so these are the few of the important concepts in the antibacterials in our next video we will come with more number of important concepts along with the question and answers so that's for today hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video